going over some simple combat today. Basic stuff. How to kill the player, how to kill a simple enemy, how to set up a simple enemy, how to shoot the enemy. Real simple stuff. It's like the basics of combat. And everybody wants to set up, you know, guys that take cover and shoot and organize squads and all that good stuff. But this is how we start. We create traps, we create simple enemies on animated patterns. And this is how you set up a level and players start understanding what is possible once they get real enemies. So our starting point is right here. We're going to play this. We have a simple let up, uh, level, simple level. And we have a ping ponging trap type enemy here. That's pretty much all he does. Ping pong back and forth when I touch him. I scream and die. And I go to my lost screen. Uh, if you don't know how to do a lost screen, you gotta go watch my other video in the Unreal Basics. I'll show you how to set up a win loss start screen. <coughs> it's basically a separate level with a widget playing, so very simple. So, what we wanna do is let's look at this guy, make him a little more sophisticated. Right now, this, this is just static mesh and we see the static mesh is animated with a very simple matinee where he plays back and forth and then he loops so let's take a look at that how that was set up is I have a static mesh and I went into matinee, created a new matinee this is the matinee, matinee enemy ping pong I'm gonna open it up all I did was create an empty group Actually, I could do this with my real guy. So let's recreate it with a blueprint. So this is a static mesh. What I need to do to make make you be able to shoot and kill this guy easier is I created a brand new blueprint. And how I did that was right click, blueprint class. And all I did was create an actor. I named it, and right now it's just blank. So again, I'm just creating a brand new blueprint, which is an actor. And all I need to do is right click in this empty spot, <coughs> put it in the appropriate spot. I have blueprints in their own little folder. Blueprint class, actor, that's all I did. Double click on this. And now what I need to do is take my red enemy static mesh, which is ping-ponging in the level, and put them in here. So I'm going to go to this top left component here, add component. And I'm going to search for static mesh. So right now I have a blank static mesh. And when you click on the static mesh, go over here to the details. It's blank because there's nothing in here. So what we want to do is use this drop down menu and go find our enemy. There he is. It's the same guy that's ping ponging in the level. But now we're going to use that static mesh to make something a little more sophisticated. So his collision has been set to in his in his uh, static mesh he has collision, but we can also tell it very specific things here. So, block all dynamic. I think the only thing I want it to, I'm going to put custom, the only thing I want it to collide with, I'm going to have it ignore everything except the player, which is a pawn. Oh, and actually, the uh, if I'm going to shoot it, oh, interesting. I've got to figure out, do we have a projectile in here? I don't think we do. To make sure my projectile will destroy it. So I'll leave it block all for now, just to make sure my projectile destroys it. We're going to compile. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go, while the static mesh is clicked on, if we scroll down here, we have a nice selection of pre-setup events here. What I want to happen is, when something hits my static mesh, gonna click on that 
and it obviously jumps to the event graph. So if we want to get back to see the static mesh, we go to viewport. That's where we were a second ago. We lost our details because the static mesh is not clicked on. But I clicked on a component hit, event graph. So I want something to happen here. And what I want to happen is only when I touch my player, I want it to destroy me and send me to the next level. Actually, I don't need to destroy me. I just need to send me to that lost screen. So how you do that in Unreal is something they do is called cast to class. So when I drag this node off here, I want to search cast to, and obviously my character is called first person. So first person character or class, I think character is going to work. Cast to first person character. There's a whole bunch of selections in there. So let's do that again. Cast to first person character. So that would specifically be me touching them. First person character class, I believe if there was multiple classes uh, in a broader spectrum, you might use that. Specifically, this is going to work for us right now. So now when I only the first person character touches this, something's going to happen. So we need to connect other actor to object here. And what we want to happen is we want to lose. And how we're losing is we're opening my level that is the lost screen. That level is called loss widget. To be careful, I'll just copy the name, put it in my open level node here. Now let's see what happens. I'm going to just drag and drop that guy in. Where does he live? Blueprints, red enemy test. Is that the one I set up? Yes, red enemy test. Compile, drag and drop in. So now if I touch him, it should do the same thing that just happened to the ping ponging guy over here. Aha! Works. Okay. Next thing I want to do. <coughs> animate this guy in a similar pattern and I'm going to take a simple pattern here I'm not I'm just going to go back and forth I'm not going to go beep boop beep boop beep 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 boop which is be a more sensical enemy path so I'm going to start him here I'm going to go to matinee or cinematics add matinee empty group, add a new empty group. Actually what I gotta do is make sure this guy's selected. Add a new empty group. Now watch. Call it enemy pattern. So because I had it selected it associates, you see the little camera there? There's an object associated with this group. So it's empty because there's no tracks. If I right click I want to add a movement track. So by default, it adds my the position of my character or my object right there at frame zero. So what we want to do is think about every two seconds maybe. Every two seconds we have it go to the far end and then go back. So I'll move it to two seconds. It's the time bar and now I need to move my enemy. I'll move all the way over here. And we will hit the add key. So he should move from here to here in two seconds, which as you can see the line, that's what he's gonna do. And now to make him go back instead of pop back, 
simply going to select this key and copy and paste it. And I select the pasted key, right click on it, and set my time to 4 seconds. So I did that by right clicking on it. Set time. So as you can see, this little pink triangle here designates how long my matinee stays active. And it's basically what's going to happen is it's going to go from here to here and pause for a second before it loops back. So I don't want that to happen. I want it to immediately loop back. I want to bring in my matinee length to match the four. Right. That should be good. And let's make sure, what do we call that? Matt, I think it's just generic matinee. Let's change my name so we know what it is. Keep it called matinee test enemy. And what we have to do is, this. we're in my level, go to level blueprint. And right now the event begin play is spawning my enemy and playing my current ping pong and I want to do that again so it's already set up to play my matinee which you can simply do by dragging this off and say play but make sure you find well context sensitive is bad in this situation uncheck it go to cinematic and you see play that's where the note is right there so I just need to reference my animation Matinee test enemy, right click, check on context sensitive, create reference. Now I can just hook this up as such. And this little set here is nothing more than sets it to loop. So, oh wait, it's not looping for everybody. Hey, what the heck? State, that's it. This is wrong. I need to set looping state so we'll do multiple looping. Check that. And then I can connect both of these here. So that's how you get them to loop. And it's looping at the beginning of the level. So we'll go here, hit play. That one's looping, and this guy's looping too. And does he still kill me? Oh! He didn't kill me. Oh! That's strange. Only on the side, huh? <coughs> what if the collision... What if the collision's off there? Interesting. It does kill me, it's just not working very well on the sides. We'll count that as a bug for now. Alright, so we've got our enemy now in a simple pattern bouncing around and I can't touch him so we want to eliminate this guy this guy poses a real threat I mean I could make it a real threat if I would if I attached a large box to the front of him that looked like a vision cone or something and it was stretching all the way out to here and anytime the vision cone touched me I did the same thing I would just have the vision cone uh, set off the lost screen instead of or I'd have the vision cone set off the lost screen as well as the body so so I basically want to shoot him so what I'm gonna do is in my projectile where's my projectile back to first person blueprint blueprints first person projectile what I want to do is collision component just like I had the uh, static mesh I selected in my enemy test here I selected my static mesh and then I created an event in my first person projectile I'm gonna go in my collision component and create an event on component hit we're gonna do the exact same thing we just did for our enemy killing us. We are going to cast two red 
enemy test. Cast a red enemy test. That's the guy who we created a blueprint for. And what we're going to do is destroy him. Destroy actor. attach that to that. If I would have not attached that to that, it was going to just destroy the projectile. So now it knows I'm not supposed to destroy this. So let's just test that out and play. This one's not going to work, right? This is just static mesh. Oh! <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. So that works. Try again. So if we were to spruce this up some more, what you do is go back to the first person projectile. Every time I destroy him, I could create a sound. Which will be that loud obnoxious sound something not as loud but obnoxious. We'll do zombie eating. See how that sounds. Alright, we just ate that red guy. That's how you kill him. That is how they kill you. Uh, this guy being hit by uh, the reason this is dying because I shoot it. Try it one more time. Why that's happening? We are not casting to a class here. So when you look at this, this is nothing more than static mesh. This is not a blueprint. And I set it up here in the level editor. Or I'm sorry, the level blueprint. If you look at the level blueprint, if you jump to event on actor hit so on actor hit anything hits this actor it's opening that level so if anything hits it it's going to set the level so what I gotta do is exactly what we just did the other two let's move this out of the way cast to first person character, attach here, and that's it. Now watch what happens when I shoot it. And when I accidentally run to it, ta -da! that's how you destroy monsters. And we could also do, uh, <coughs> I'm going to a lost screen right now, but if I wanted to uh, just destroy this guy, let's look at that really quick. Because sometimes we don't want to go to a lost screen, we want to kill a guy. <clears throat> or no, actually we are going, what am I saying? We are going there. I am completely confused. There we go. And that's basically what I did with these guys over here. Let me open this. I shoot him. Destroy him. Shoot him. Destroy him. So the other thing that happens is when he gets destroyed, he's spawning. So, it's a little bonus there. They spawn, by killing my enemies, they spawn keys, which I will go over in another video. So I hope that helps you guys with some basic enemy setup, maybe a trap setup, super simple stuff. Alright, I hope that simplifies your life. And I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.